Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today with the third episode of our Pokemon Platinum Random Car Challenge. In episodes 1 and 2 we took down Rourke and Gardenia to earn the first two Sinnoh Gym badges so Fantina's up next. We were just dealing with the weakest Pokemon in episode 1 and for the second episode we added in the middle tier of cards but now it's time to bring in the strongest group. This final stack features all of the Pokemon whose base stat totals exceed 450. We're going to need them more and more the further we get into the game and Fantina's team is a good place to start. We'll need a team of three for this one and it looks like we're going to be using Minan, Slackoth, and Stantler. That's pretty even, it's one Pokemon from each of the three stacks. Two normal types against a ghost type gym leader is definitely an interesting draw. Let's see what moves we're going to be using. Suvari the Minin is up first at level 24, and she's equipped with Spark, Charm, Encore, and Thunder Wave. Up next, we've got Pilosa the Slackoth, also at 24, and he's got Faint Attack, Yawn, Slackoth, and Encore. Having a Dark-type attack on hand is a great option, but Truant will make Slackoth incredibly difficult to use. Finally, we've got Cupid the Startler at level 26, and his moveset's made up of Astonish, Hypnosis, Confuse Ray, and Sand Attack. I always like using Startler because of the varied move options, and this is a really solid moveset for this one. Let's get into it. The battle begins with Fantina's Duskull facing off against Minin. Suvari starts off by paralyzing Duskull with Thunder Wave as she tries and fails to burn her with Will-O-Wisp. The Electrified Cheerleader Pokemon then crashes into Duskull with Spark, taking her below half health, but at the second time of asking, Will-O-Wisp connects. Shadow Sneak allows Duskull to strike first, and with the attack drop from her burn, Mine and Spark isn't enough to finish off the Ghost type. Before Suvari can take down Duskull, Fantina uses a Super Potion to heal her right up. A couple of weakened Spark attacks take Duskull down to around half health before another Shadow Sneak badly hurts Suvari. Spark takes the Requiem Pokemon into one shot range, but with the burn chipping away Minin's HP, one final Shadow Sneak earns Fantina the first win of the match. That burn really made things tough for us there. We call on Stantler next and after Intimidate lowers Duskull's attack, a single Astonish ties up the match. That didn't take long. Fantina sends in her Haunter second and we call for Hypnosis, but Cupid misses. Haunter's Confuse Ray connects though, so instead of risking Stantler, we recall him to send out Slackoth. The Sloth Pokemon is immediately put to sleep by Hypnosis. While Pelosa is sleeping, Fantina calls for Confuse Ray and when Slackoth continues enjoying his rest, Haunter lands a Sucker Punch. After one more Sucker Punch, Slackoth wakes up and strikes with a faint attack that leaves Haunter in red health. Fantina uses another Super Potion while Slackoth just takes a turn to chill, you know? He's earned it. Before he's ready to move again, Haunter puts him back to sleep with Hypnosis. This is fun. Two more blows of Sucker Punch leave Pelosa weak before he awakens to do just a little bit more relaxing. The nice rest clearly wasn't enough. Thankfully, Haunter finally misses with Hypnosis and Slackoth chooses that time to snap out of confusion, landing another faint attack. With Haunter on her deathbed, Fantina calls for Hypnosis again and it becomes clear that she's run out of attacking options. After confusing Pelosa once more, Haunter goes for... Confuse Ray. I guess Sucker Punch only has 5 power points. Pelosa awakens to loaf around for a bit before Haunter puts him back to sleep. After a couple more attempts at confusing the confused sloth, Haunter just floats there when he wakes up. One final faint attack KOs Haunter, ending that incredibly chill face-off to take us into a 2 on 1. Fantina sends in her Miss Magius last and calls for Psybeam, which puts an end to Slackoth, but being awake, being asleep, and being knocked out are really all one and the same for him. Stantler comes in for the battle's last face-off and starts things by missing Hypnosis again. That means Miss Magius can freely connect with Confused Ray, so good start. Cupid hits himself in confusion before a Psybeam takes him down to around half health. After consistent misses, Stantler finally manages to connect with Hypnosis, taking back control. Confusion damage makes the advantage pretty pointless, but after snapping out of it, Stantler uses Sand Attack. Cupid's Confuse Ray then makes things more difficult for the Sleeping Ghost. Finally, after all the setup, Stantler attacks with Astonish, waking up Miss Magius. The shock of the strike forces her to flinch though, so Stantler puts her right back to sleep. Astonish wakes Miss Magius up once more, and although she doesn't flinch, she hits herself in confusion. One final Astonish from Cupid scores him the knockout, handing us the win over Fantina. That felt seriously unlikely at various points, but we've got the Relic Badge now, so let's move on. Before leaving Heart Home City though, we've got another rival battle with Barry. We're gonna need a team of four for this one. It looks like we'll be using Gardos, Weepin' Bell, Charmander, and Sea King. That is a really nicely varied team. It's also the strongest we've had for a long time. Let's have a look at the movesets. 
Bakunawa the Gyarados is up first at level 25, and he's got Thrash, Bite, and Dragon Rage. Up next, we've got Liberty the Weeping Bell at level 23, and her moveset's made up of Acid, Sleep Powder, Poison Powder, and Vine Whip. Newt the Charmander is also at level 23, and he has Ember, Growl, Smokescreen, and Dragon Rage. Finally, we've got Latimeria the Sea King at level 27, and Water Pulse, Supersonic, Aqua Ring, and Poison Jab make up her moveset. Alright, let's give this a go. Barry leads off with Staravia, and we start things out with Gyarados. The Pokemon intimidate one another so much that both of their attack stats are lowered. Bakanawa sends a Dragon Rage crashing into Staravia that takes him below half health before a double team ups his evasion. Another Dragon Rage finishes the job to give us the lead before even taking a hit. Barry calls on his Ponysaw next, and although Gyarados is up to it, the lack of water type moves makes a switch out to Sea King the obvious choice. Our rival calls for a Tail Whip, which is ordinarily not too threatening, but when that tail is made of fire, it suddenly becomes pretty terrifying. It comes to nothing though as Latimeria fires off a water pulse that's good for a one shot. When Barry sends in his Roselia, we recall Sea King to send out Charmander. Newt dodges a Stun Spore and Entry to attack with Ember. A critical hit leads to another one shot, so in no time at all, Barry's down to his final Pokemon. When Primplop comes in, we make another switch out to Weepin' Bell. Bubble Beam makes contact, but it's not very effective. Vine Whip deals more damage, but disappointingly, not by much. We follow up a Primplup Growl with another Vine Whip to take him below half health, but it's slow going. A Peck takes Weeping Bell below half too before she sends a Sleep Powder wide of the mark. That ends up being her last action as a critical hit on Peck knocks her out. We send Gyarados back in, and after Intimidate freezes Primplup in place, a Dragon Rage blasts away the remainder of his HP. That was pretty easy. It was a really strong team for this series though, so not exactly surprising. Having defeated our rival once more, we can move on to Celaceon Town and from there onwards to Veilstone City. That's where the next gym is located and that means we're faced with this infuriating gym puzzle. I forget what I need to push where every single time I play through Platinum. It took far too many attempts for me to get this recorded in one go where I didn't mess about seven different things up. Anyway, before taking on the gym leader, Maylene will need to draw a team of three. As a fighting type specialist, Maylene will be hoping for anything but flying or psychic types. So we're going to be using Spearow, Squirtle, and Mewtwo. Yeah, any team with Mewtwo is probably going to be good enough for any given battle, especially in a fighting type gym. Let's have a look at the movesets. Daily the Spearow's up first at level 28, and he's got Aerial Ace, Leer, Agility, and Mirror Move. Even without Mewtwo, I feel like Spearow could do some work here. Test of the Squirtle's up next, a level higher at 29, and he's equipped with Aqua Tail, Protect, Withdraw, and Bite. Last up, we've got Talon the Mewtwo, who's at level 32, on par with Maylene's Lucario, and it has Confusion, Psych Up, Swift, and Future Sight. Alright, I can't foresee any issues in this one. Mewtwo has always been this series equivalent of a get out of jail free card. So, let's get into it. Maylene starts by sending out Meditite, and we throw Spearow into battle. Daily clearly feels time is of the essence, because an immediate Aerial Ace cuts down Meditite to give us the lead. You know what they say, the early bird massacres the human ice cream meditating monster thing. They say that, I, I think. When Maylene sends in Machoke, we stay in with Spearow and his speed allows another early strike. This time Aerial Ace falls short of the one shot, but Rock Tomb can't quite finish things either. To give another team member a chance, we recall Spearow and send in Squirtle. Testa is not too bothered by Rock Tomb, and after getting in close, he strikes with Aqua Tail for the win. When Lucario is sent in, we keep Squirtle in battle, and after just about living through Drain Punch, he strikes with Aqua Tail once more. It badly injures the Aura Pokemon, but we're probably testing our luck by staying in. Squirtle swings another Aqua Tail at Lucario, but Metal Claw lands first. It's more than Testa can take, but he's made way nicely for Mewtwo. The legendary Psychic type enters the battle, and Melee knows it's over. Thankfully, she doesn't waste time healing. Confusion throws Lucario into the wall of the gym, knocking him out to finish the battle. As expected, that wasn't too bad. Alright, we got a couple of quick battles in a row there, so we may as well move on to Pistoria City and see if Barry can cause us any problems in our next face-off. We need a team of four for this one too, so let's see who we'll be using. Our team will be made up of Miss Drevis, Ponyta, Absol, and Graveler. I really like the look of that team. They should match up pretty well against Barry's team too. Okay, let's have a look at what moves we'll have. Grim the Graveler is up first at level 36, and he's got Earthquake, Defense Curl, Rollout, and Self-Destruct. 
Brago the Ponytail's up second at level 32, and he's got Flame Wheel, Growl, Stump, and Takedown. Costa the Absol's also at 32, and he has Quick Attack, Sword Stance, Leer, and Bite. Finally, we've got Spectre the Mistrevious at level 34, and his moveset's made up of Psybeam, Confuse Ray, Pain Split, and Astonish. Alright, let's see what this team can do. Barry starts things out with Staravia once more, but this time he's got an even worse matchup in Graveler. Intimidate does actually affect Grim, but he should be okay. Barry calls for a double team to get the battle started, and we call for rollout. Graveler gets rolling and crashes into the right bird, taking him below half health. Giving up on raising Staravia's evasion, Barry settles on a wing attack instead. It barely makes a mark on Grim though, who rolls right over Staravia to give us the first win of the match. We're locked into Graveler for now thanks to rollout, so when Roselia comes in, we can't get away. A quad effective Mega Drain saps Grim's HP, but with only 3 hit points remaining, he counters with rollout. The attack flattens Roselia, leaving Barry with a floral pancake to take home. Brimplop is out next, and we're still locked into rollout, so no switching yet. Despite having Bubble Beam in his moveset, Barry's overconfidence shines through as he calls for Peck. From 3 HP, it fails to score the knockout, allowing Graveler to squash another foe with a one shot on rollout. Ponyta's out last, and after gaining a couple of hit points from leveling up, I thought Stomp might come up short too. Barry finally gets rid of Graveler though, so let's see our own Ponyta next. Brago's takedown leaves Barry's Ponyta below half health, but after being stomped on, we make another switch. I always want to use the whole team if possible, so Mistrevious comes in as Ponyta stomps right through him. Confusory mixes things up for Barry's final team member, but as we've still got one more, we change again. Absol enters the battle, and we let a bit of overconfidence seep in on our side too. Instead of calling for a stab bite, we call for quick attack, but it's not enough. Ponyta is able to land one final stomp before falling to quick attack. Alright, Graveler made that really easy for us, but maybe things could have been different if Primplop had used Bubble Beam, or Roselia got a high roll on Mega Drain. Neither happened though, so that's another win over Barry, and Crasher Wake is up next. We'll get around to that battle in episode 4 though. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.